In this presentation, we will understand the concept of the if statement. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture. The topics of this lecture are introduction to the if statement, the statement outside if block, the shorthand if, and the nested if statements. Let's get started with the first topic that is introduction to the if statement. So, what is an if statement and what it does? An if statement decides whether a particular statement or a block of statements will be executed or not. So, if we have a specific statement or if we have a couple of statements which we want to execute based on some condition, then we can do that with the help of the if statement. If statement allows us to decide whether a particular statement or block of statements will be executed or not based on some condition. Before seeing this in action, we must familiarize ourselves with the syntax of the if statement. So, here comes the syntax. First, we must type this keyword if, then the white space and then the condition which we want to check. After this, this colon is mandatory. Then within this if statement, we can type as many statements we want. These statements will be executed if the condition is satisfied. This condition is an expression that evaluates to a boolean value, either true or false. When I say this condition is satisfied, I mean that this condition returns true. If this condition returns true, then these statements will be executed. Otherwise, these statements will not be executed. There are only two possible values this condition can give us. Either it will give true or false. If the condition returns true, then these statements will be executed. Otherwise, these statements will not be executed. As simple as that. Now, it can be observed that these statements are indented. This clearly indicates that this block of statements will be executed based on this condition. These statements are inside this if statement. So, you must be clear with this idea. Indentation plays an important role in Python in deciding the block of code. This is one block of code. Now, let's see one example to demonstrate how if statement works. Let's consider this example. Let's say that x is 10, which means that x is a variable which is pointing to this value 10. Now, we want to check a condition. We want to check this. If x is less than 50, then we will print x is less than 50 on the screen. This means we need to type if x is less than 50 colon, then print x is less than 50. This statement must be printed if this condition is satisfied or in other words, if this condition returns true. Here we know that x is pointing to this value 10. Therefore, eventually this x will be replaced by 10 at runtime. 10 is less than 50. Therefore, this condition is satisfied. This condition will return true. Hence, this statement will be executed. This means that x is less than 50 will be printed on the screen. Therefore, the output of this program is x is less than 50. I hope this is clear. Now, I don't want you to execute this program in the command line. I want you to execute this program in Visual Studio Code instead. Now, why am I forcing you to execute this code in Visual Studio Code? The reason is pretty simple. From now on, we will see complicated programs. And I don't want you to execute those programs in command line as it might be little bit tough to execute those programs. Therefore, my recommendation is to go ahead with Visual Studio Code in order to execute your programs. This program is not that complicated, but still I want you to execute this program in Visual Studio Code to familiarize yourself how to execute programs in VS Code or Visual Studio Code. So, now I want you to open the Visual Studio Code. So, let's open the Visual Studio Code. Here we can observe the Visual Studio code is opened. Now, I want you to create a folder called Python work on your desktop. From now onwards, we will put all our Python files in Python work folder. 
So I want you to create Python work folder on your desktop. And now I want you to open that folder in the Visual Studio code so that we can put our files here itself. So for this, what we will do, we will click on this file and click on open folder or we can directly use these shortcuts like Ctrl K or Ctrl O. Either of these shortcuts will work in order to open the folder or we can click on this button and click on open folder in order to open our folder. So now I want you to open the Python work folder. After opening the Python work folder, you will observe that folder here in this left panel. So let's open the folder. Now the Python work folder is opened as it can be observed here. Now we can start adding files in this folder by clicking on this button, which is the new file button. By clicking on this button, you can create a new file in this folder. So let's click on this button. Now here we can observe the blinking cursor, which is asking us to type the name of the file. Let's name the file less than 50.py. .py is the extension of the Python file. We must type .py at the end so that Visual Studio Code will recognize this file as the Python file. So now let's type the name of the file less than 50.py. We are not allowed to add spaces in between. So we will replace spaces by underscores. So we will type less underscore than underscore 50 dot py. I have typed the name of the file. Now I will hit enter. Now we can observe the editor window is opened. Our file is opened. We are now ready to type in our program here. So let's type the same program which we have seen already. You can pause the video and type the code and then continue with this video. I have typed the code and I hope you have typed it too. Now let's save this file. This file is not yet saved. It can be observed one unsaved here. So let's save this file first before executing this file. You can click on this file and click on save button or you can go ahead with the shortcut control plus S. I'm right now on my windows machine. Therefore, I'm seeing control plus S here, which means I need to press control and then S on my keyboard in order to save this file. But if you're on Mac machine, then you will observe some other command here. Now let's go ahead and save this file by clicking on this button. Now the file is saved. As you can observe, the message is also gone. Now we are ready to execute this file. For this, we will open the terminal which is built into this editor. We just need to go here, terminal and click on new terminal. Or we can directly use this shortcut, control shift back tick. In Mac, you will observe some other shortcut. You can go ahead with that shortcut. Let's click on this new terminal button now. The terminal window is opened and it can be observed that the path is already available to us. We are now ready to execute this less than 50.py file. So for this, we will type Python space less than 50.py. We will type the name of the file after the Python keyword. So let's do this now. I have typed the command here. Now let's hit enter to execute our file. We are getting this output x is less than 50. This is what we want. We are getting this output x is less than 50 because this condition is satisfied. I hope it is clear how to run a program in Visual Studio Code. Now let's get back to our presentation. We have successfully executed this program and now this means that we are ready to move on to the next topic that is the statement outside if block. The statement outside if block will be executed regardless of whether the condition in the if statement is satisfied or not. So it does not matter whether the condition in the if statement is satisfied or not. The statement which is outside if block will be executed. So it does not depend on the condition of the if statement. The syntax looks like this. We have this if block and after this if block we have this statement. I have added this comment which can easily be replaced by the statement which we want to execute. Here I have written statement outside if block. 
and here i've written statement inside if block this statement will be executed when this condition is satisfied and this statement will be executed regardless of this condition it does not matter whether this condition is satisfied or not this statement will be executed let's see this in action for this we will consider one simple example let's say that x is equal to 60 now again we want to check the same condition if x is less than 50 then we must execute print x is less than 50 so let's type this if x is less than 50 then print x is less than 50 now we also want to print end of the program but we want to print that statement regardless of this condition so it does not matter whether this condition is satisfied or not end of the program must be printed on the screen for this reason we will type print end of the program outside of this if block this is important this print statement is not part of this if block as it can be observed this print statement is not indented therefore this print statement is outside this if block hence this statement will be executed regardless of this condition we know that x is 60 therefore this condition is not satisfied hence this statement will not be evaluated but this statement will be evaluated hence we will see this output end of the program I would encourage you to run this code in Visual Studio Code and check this on your own whether this is working or not. You can experiment with different values of x and check what is the output. Maybe you can change this value to 10 and see whether these two statements will be printed or not. First, x is less than 50 must be printed and then end of the program must be printed. As if x is equal to 10, this condition will be satisfied. Therefore, x is less than 50 will be printed. and this statement must also be printed you can check this on your own i hope this concept is also clear let's move on to the next topic that is the short hand if now what is the meaning of the short hand if when only one statement to execute put that in the same line as the if statement if there is just one statement we want to execute inside the if block then we can write that statement just after the if statement This is called the shorthand if. Now let's see the syntax. This is how it looks like. We can type if condition first, then colon, and then the statement which we want to execute based on this condition. Now let's see one example to see this in action. Let's say that x is 10 and now we want to check this condition. If x is less than 50, then print x is less than 50 on the screen. We do not have to write the statement print x is less than 50 in the next line we can write that statement after the if statement because there is only one statement that we want to execute based on the condition x less than 50 hence we can type if x less than 50 colon print x is less than 50 this is the only statement we want to execute based on this condition hence we can go ahead with this short hand if now After this we also want to print end of the program but that must be printed regardless of this condition hence we must type this statement print end of the program outside this if block this statement is outside of this if block as there is no indentation so now if we execute this program we will get this output x is less than 50 end of the program why is that the case because x is 10 therefore this condition is satisfied hence this statement will be printed and this statement will be printed whether this condition is satisfied or not this is the reason why we are seeing this output now let's move on to the next topic that is nested if statements the if statement inside another if statement is called nested if statement so if we add an if statement inside another if statement then that is called nested if statement the syntax looks like this if condition 1 is true then this will be executed i have written this comment executes when condition 1 is true this can be replaced by the statement or statements we want to execute based on this condition inside this if statement we have another if statement if this condition is satisfied then the statement inside this if statement will be executed 
here I have written executes when condition 2 is true. If this condition is true, then the statement or statements inside this if statement will be executed. And this statement outside if block will be executed no matter what. So this is the structure of the nested if statement and it is useful when we have multiple conditions and we want to check those conditions. Let's see one example to demonstrate this fact. Let's take x equal to 10 and now let's check this condition. If x is less than 50, then we will continue. And let's say we want to check one more condition. If x is equal to 10, then x is equal to 10 must be printed on the screen. So we will type if x is less than 50, then we'll continue. And we must type if x is equal to 10, then we must continue and print x is equal to 10. This is the nested if structure as it can be observed. Here we are checking two conditions. If x is less than 50 and after this if x is equal to 10, then this statement will be printed. x is equal to 10. Now let's say that we want to print this statement x is less than 50 regardless of whether this condition is satisfied or not. This means we need to type print x is less than 50 outside of this if block. Here we need to type print x is less than 50. This statement will be executed regardless of whether this condition is satisfied or not. But this statement will only be executed when this condition is satisfied. As it can be observed, this statement is part of this if statement. I hope this concept is clear. After this, let's say that we also want to print end of the program. But that must be printed regardless of whether these two conditions are satisfied or not. For this, we must type print end of the program here. Now this statement will be executed even if this condition is not satisfied. This statement does not depend on this condition. And it does not depend on this condition as well. So when we run this program, we know that x is 10, therefore this condition is satisfied. As this condition is satisfied, we can go inside and check this condition. As x is equal to 10, therefore this condition is satisfied. Hence, this statement will be executed. Hence, we will see x is equal to 10 on the screen. But we will also see x is less than 50. And this statement will also be printed regardless of whether these conditions are satisfied or not. Therefore, we will see this output x is equal to 10, x is less than 50, end of the program. I hope this concept is completely clear. Now I want you to run this code in Visual Studio Code and check the result on your own. So with this, we are done with all the topics of this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.